Francis was in the uh, art scene in Melbourne, as Ross said, and uh, when that exhibition came from um, uh, to Melbourne, Sydney, and Adelaide, uh, it was French contemporary, French and English contemporary art came in 1939, and uh, that really knocked their socks off. I mean, you know, Francis told me that uh, when they saw that, they went, "Geez, what, what have we been doing? This is it," you know. Mind you, most of these paintings were painted in France in um, uh, 1908 onwards, you know. So it had been happening for 30 years, a lot of it, but it hadn't hit Australia in the real. They'd seen some reproductions, but to see it in the real is a different matter. You see a Picasso this size or a Matisse, you know, six by four, you know, pretty serious stuff. And, uh, and Francis also, particularly like George Braque, uh, Juan Gris, Picasso, you know, I mean, but the fun, the thing is about Francis, he had the nous to go, well, this is good, you know, and uh, the, all the rest of the artists, uh, Nolan um, and uh, Boyd wasn't here, I don't think then, but uh, Dobell, uh, Albert Tucker, all of them, they, they were just knocked out. This was it. And so consequently, this particular painting here is very uh, influenced by real Duff Dufay, a uh, French painter. Yeah, so, uh, you know, there's a bit of influence because it knocked them, knocked them out, you know. Uh, you know where we're about to do? Oh, no idea. It, you know, it's probably, uh, uh, he just made it up, you know, and put some flags in, you know. Flag. He liked the idea of a bit of colour there and put some flags in and, uh, you know, it, it, you know, nobody. Banners in the morning. Uh, is that what it's called, is it? I don't know. I don't know. It's a song. And uh, I think this one here, and then the, the exhibition he had in 1941, uh, it's very hard to tell which ones were in it, but I think this one here was in it. I think it's called Annunciation in the catalogue that Robert uh, gave me and talking to Ozzy Hall. I think that that one was in the uh, exhibition. Called, it's called Annunciation, but I don't know why. But I, I have seen uh, very early medieval painters, paintings, of, uh, you know, the angel and that, but I don't know what Francis's mindset was when he, if, if that's the one, I don't know. Uh, this one here? Can I just make one quick yeah. comment? Yeah. I, I assume Francis had never been to Balmoral Beach in yeah. Sydney, but the geography of that is actually very much like Balmoral Beach. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah just well, a speculation. Yeah, it might be. Uh, this one here, he painted that painting there for Ozzy Hall's wedding. Uh, Ozzy Hall got married and he painted it for his wedding oh. and uh, so and he gave it to Ozzy. These two were owned by Ozzy Hall but we never ever saw them in Melbourne and Paul Smith told me he never ever, ever spotted them at all because uh, Ozzy and uh, Francis you know were uh, you know not getting on and so uh, consequently uh, Ozzy had them in the back room somewhere you know we only saw them later you know. Uh, this little one here uh, is called, uh, that was in the exhibition of 1941, and I think this one was, uh, and it was called um, Portrait. Portrait of a Self-Realized Soul. That's what Francis called it. And he signed it, Francis Bravers, in 1941. Uh, yeah, so uh, that's what he called that one there. Uh, yes. Oh yeah, and he had it not for sale, and, and I think this one was 20-odd uh, guineas. They were much dearer than the Nolans at the time. <laughs> and we'll go over here. And this one here is uh, uh, nurses dancing at uh, Bonavilla military camp. There's a hospital there, and that's what Robert told me the uh, where it's, the setting is of it. Um, and the uh, we'll leave that one for a minute. And down at the end there, that one is a painting of uh, D24. Uh, tower. The police headquarters in Melbourne was a big, tall tower. Russell, Russell Street. Yeah, Russell Street. That's right. And uh, then this little one here, the little the kettle, sort of a mixture of a kettle come uh, landscape sort of duality thing. Uh, that I think they're all painted around the 40s, 40, early 40s. This one here uh, is 1946, which is a hell of a lot later. And there's a big gap between when he painted the earlier ones and when he painted this one. And um, Robert seemed to think that that would have been painted uh, when he was up at Camden with the Baron. 
Um, and as Ross pointed out, like a meditative sort of thing, you know. And we don't know uh, if there's any other pieces from that time, uh, but that one survived that period, you know. Um, but, uh, yeah. But, yeah, what else can I say about them? Nothing much, really. Uh, well, uh, well, you'd ask Francis things, and he, I remember one thing he said to me. He said, uh, look, I'm not a teacher. I'm an informer. So you take whatever you... I didn't say, well, what do you mean by that? But, uh, and uh, I'll, I'll read a little bit here. But he, he said... Uh, he wrote a letter and he was talking to me, you know. Uh, and he's saying that what Baba stressed most of all was honesty. When you're uh, painting or writing. Now, John... Or dancing. Yeah, right. Now, John, you must be very careful, as I must also. As you by now have probably found out, real art is dependent upon real honesty. Baba stresses honesty in everything we do or say. In art and poetry, it means not making a brushstroke or putting down a line, uh, sorry, or putting down a word which one does not know. There can be no faking, no thinking that one can get away with it, as he uh, hates faking and posing. One can fool oneself so easily. One may even fool everybody else for a time, but one cannot fool him, for he knows who he is and judges whether each line or bit of colour is faithfully done. With much love, Francis. You will, you will no doubt be glad to know. This is in 1976. You will know, you will no doubt be glad to know that there was some new singing at the anniversary last month, Francis. That's these guys. Yeah. That's it. John, John, before you go, yeah, well, I have a question on before you. Yeah. Do you have anything further to add? Ross was suggesting or was saying yeah. that uh, Francis had more of an influence on Australian painting oh, yeah. than that is being credited. Do you have it as a painter yourself? Yeah. Do you have any comments? Well, um, I, I, well, I don't know. You can speculate. I mean, he, did, he didn't do a lot of work, but uh, had had he kept going, I felt he's so sharp. I mean, Nolan and all those guys. They don't let you hang out with them unless you're up to the speed. And he was probably more up to speed than some of them, you know. And so, um, and like France, um, Adrian Rollins once told me that uh, he interviewed Nolan once, and Nolan said that uh, Francis was a great influence on him uh, because they lived in the same building, and you know, like you know, they throw ideas around, yeah. and Francis was no slouch, and so he'd you know be uh, saying no, but I reckon this and that, you know, whatever. Uh, but you can't really say because he, he didn't do a lot of work. Um, but he, he, and he told me um, he told me once that he uh, he really liked painting, but he found that he couldn't express himself with that medium, and he decided to uh, switch to poetry and words. And uh, so, uh, but like you know, when you look at the uh, other works of uh, Nolan and. Uh, uh, Tucker and all of those guys, you know, uh, Francis was right in that league, you know, and probably better in, in, than some of them at this particular stage, you know. Uh, and as uh, Ross said about shapes, there's an interesting story about shapes. I, I used to always show him the latest uh, uh, painter I was interested in or something like that, and there was a New Zealand painter and uh, a very good one, and I showed him a book and he looked through it and a lot of the stuff was abstract, you know, and he said... Uh, yeah, mm, look through it all. Interesting shapes, aren't they? You know, basically a put down. <laughs> but, uh, you know, because he, by that stage, he then was, you know, stuffed shapes, we're into looking at the God man, you know. You know, forget the shapes, forget all that. Now it's God in human form. You know, abstract stuff's finished. So, uh, yeah, so that's, uh, yeah, so like you can't really equate. Uh, whether he would have or not. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And John, before you go, yeah. 
any any comments that Francis made about other painters that you remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, I, as I said, I used to show him uh, all these different painters, you know, and he basically put them all down. <laughs> and uh, and uh, but once I showed him a book of uh, uh, American painter Philip Guston, you know, and he said, oh, "Shit, this guy's uh, got something happening here. He's good, isn't he?" You know, Philip Guston he is a good painter too. But uh, but so he did, uh, you know, he was the only guy that he uh, thought was, uh, you know, that I showed him. But uh, yeah. So that's about it. Yeah. Well, John, before you go, any any other little treasures that you're holding back on? No, well, I, can, I might say them later. I can't think what they are now. Let me just have a quick look here. I've made a couple of notes. I used to like that Ezra Pound thing, make it new, but he had a different slant on it, you know. Oh, also there was a there was a. Uh, I once when I was coming up here, I found a uh, uh, a Time uh, magazine article at Ezra Pound. Had just died, and uh, but Ezra Pound had been silent, you know. Yeah, Ezra Pound had been silent for the last a couple of years of his life. So I took that article and showed him, you know, because he sent a copy of uh, Stay with God to Ezra Pound. But I don't know if any that had anything to do with that. But anyway, he was tickled pink that Ezra Pound was silent for the last. Uh, Couple of years of his life. He yeah. refers to Ezra Pound in the state of God. Sorry. He refers to yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, I think he sent him a copy, a copy of it. But Ezra Pound never replied. That's that's what he said. And, and John, what about the early papers like Frau and Jellicoe and all those sort of? Oh, he things? loved all that. Stuff. So he's into that then. Oh yeah, he loved all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, he loved all of that. You know, uh, up to like he says, up up until the medieval times, they consider it uh, the the Dark Ages, but in actual fact it was the Age of Light, yeah. after the medieval times with all of the bloody, uh, uh, you know, Baroque and, um, um, you know, uh, Renaissance, Renaissance was all to do with the self, you know. You, you stand in front of your painting rather than behind it, you know. And uh, the, uh, but the early stuff, he, he loved all that. The real early stuff and the early Buddhist art, and, you know, he talked about that and uh, those, uh, you know, all, all of the... Uh, so, but he was very good, like, you know, you were saying that he, uh, uh, was he, but he didn't do a, a lot of painting, but by God, he kept right up to the play, and he could answer, you could talk to him about painting and that, and he'd pick you up all the time, you know, and uh, so he was, uh, he knew what the process was, you know, like that, uh, you were, Ross was talking about, uh, I don't know what it was now, but anyway, but it refers to what I'm going to say now. There's a great quote of uh, John Cage, you know, the musician. He says that uh, when I'm in the studio, he said, I'm in there and I'm working and I have all of my friends with me in my head. I have all my friends with me and gradually, one by one, they go. And then I'm left there uh, alone and then now and again, I go. So that's the, you know, that's the process of painting. When you're painting, you know, like, well, 90% of the time, you know, you're all, your head's full of shit, you know. And, uh, but then, uh, then there is the, the rare moment where you, you do something, you don't even know you've done it, really. And you look back and you go, oh, God, that works quite well. So, you know, that's the state to get into, which is very rare, but you can get into it sometimes. Like Russ was saying, a meditative thing, you can get into that state where you're sort of not there. And uh, you you're just doing it, and it's all happening, and you know, and then you then when you realise that, say you're doing about four or five faces, and you're going away, and you're doing them, and they're going really well, and you think, oh shit, that's not bad, you know, and you do this next one, and all of a sudden it all, oh Christ, can't get it. So you once you uh, you're out of the way, you're fine, but when you are there, you're uh, it's a mess, you know. I'm just wanting to say that Francis Brabazon was very impressed with John Parry's art. Uh, yeah. I, 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 I was round when uh, Francis received this one here and Francis was absolutely smitten. He said, he's managed to capture the eyes of God. Yes, <clears throat> yes.
about the way you work as an artist. Braque's explanation of it was that he loved the accidents of painting. That which you did not prepare, which came up of its own accord when you're out of the way. And that's that's good. Man. Yeah, right. That is one of John's paintings over there in the corner. This magnificent piece. And, and this is the first one that we got when Francis said, "Ah, there's a young one. There's a painter that arrived." Oh, John. Yeah. Um, did um, did Francis ever? Um, William Blake was romantic. William Blake? Yeah, he was a romantic yeah, oh, yeah, poet. Right. And, you know, um, Ross was referring to the romantic poet. Yeah, poem. yeah. Did, did he ever comment upon Blake as a, for his etchings? Oh, I think he loved Blake's paintings, yeah. Right. Yeah, he did. Yeah. So Blake was a painter rather, yeah. rather than a poet. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, 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 he loved Blake's stuff. He had good taste. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, John. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.